Hello everyone and welcome and in today's video we're going to be going over the Novel Keys NK87 Entry Edition. This is a $135 injection molded plastic 10 keyless keyboard and it's a bare bones kit as well so it's not going to come with switches, it's not going to come with keycaps. So overall the uh, build of the keyboard is probably going to cost you anywhere from $200 ish to probably $300 depending on what keycap sets and switches that you get. But we'll get into that in just a little bit. Right now I just want to go ahead and talk about the keyboard and my experience building this thing a couple other things as well so building this keyboard is uh it, it's okay it's an okay experience it does come with the novel keys screw in stabilizers so they are pre-lubed but what i found is that there's just lube on the end of the wire where the wire meets more or less the stabilizer and whatnot and honestly speaking i definitely had to go in and add some more lube now it's not necessary to completely disassemble the keyboard you can just use a, a, a lube syringe from kinetic labs if you have one uh, to add some more 205 or 206 grade zero like I did to your stabilizers to the sides inside underneath and up top of the wire and also on the wire bend a little bit you kind of want to spread that lube around because if you don't the stabilizers they sound decent but not necessarily the best so the stabilizer we covered that pretty good I do want to mention though that the spacebar layout on this keyboard is a 7U spacebar. So make sure that the keycap set that you decide to go with does support 7U spacebars, or I think it's called like the Sangam or Sangu layout, something like that. Make sure that your keycap set supports that. It does give you a really unique aesthetic because the upcoming Keychron Q3 that I also purchased and is on the way um, does not support 7U spacebar. And I kind of wish that it did, especially with it being a, quite a bit more expensive than this one, because I just think that 7U spacebar looks really good. Getting back to the build experience of the NK87, pulling this thing apart, honestly speaking, is not necessarily the easiest. If you are gonna take it apart, I highly recommend that you go ahead and you unscrew all the screws first up top, unscrew all of those, and then you take something that's very thin to pull the top plate essentially from the rest of the keyboard because there's these little clips all the way around the keyboard that keep it in place. And you have to be, make sure that you don't pull too hard because this plastic, I'm pretty sure is very easy to crack. I'm almost positive this is the same plastic that's on the NK65 and I'm pretty sure that my NK65 has a crack in it from the first time that I took it apart. So I was very careful with this one. Just wanna let you guys know that this thing is gonna take you a few minutes to take apart. So you will have a couple of different silicone components inside of the keyboard as well. You will have a silicone mat in between the plate as well as the PCB. And you'll also have another silicone dampener underneath the PCB. So it will be a pretty deep sounding keyboard just based on the fact that everything will be very isolated. And it does sound pretty good. I do have two builds with this keyboard because one of them I built for myself and the other I did build for a giveaway winner on my second channel when we hit a thousand subscribers, but that's besides the point. I have the white one as well as the blue one in the studio, and we're gonna take a look at how both of those sound. So with the white keyboard, we had some NK creams that were lubed and filmed and broken in from BD's keyboards. I will have a link to them in the description below, where honestly speaking, these are the best novel keys creams that I've ever felt. And they blow the ones that I lubed two years ago completely out of the water. They sound and feel incredible. I did not know that novel keys creams could be so smooth. The other switches that we have inside of the blue keyboard, otherwise known as the giveaway keyboard, are the Ash Keeps and Texi or Light Linear switches, which are pretty different from the creams. The creams are an entirely palm switch from the stem, top and bottom housing, where the or Light switches use a PME top and bottom housing as well as a palm stem and also a double stage spring. So pretty big difference in terms of the uh, components of what makes up each switch. And there is a little bit of a difference in the keycap profiles between the two sound tests as well. So with the first one from the white keyboard, we are using PVT-02 manufactured by Milky Way Keys. These are Cherry Profile die sub keycaps. And the other keycap set that we're using is actually from Echo. This is their Macaw, I believe the name of the keycap set is, but it's blue and yellow with uh, some accents and whatnot. More or less, this is the ASA profile that is also double shot PVT in comparison to the die sub PVT of the other set. But the keycaps are definitely made to uh, thock a little bit harder. But the PME housing in the or light switches is a bit more clacky and the creams are a lot deeper pitched than those switches. But I think it's very interesting to see the differences of how the keycap profile definitely affects the sound of the keyboard.
The unboxing experience, I will tell you guys though, is a pretty pleasant experience. The quality of the box is really nice. You do get an included carrying case as well as a switch puller, keycap puller, and USB type C cable. And for $135 plus shipping, so probably about 10 to $15 or maybe a little bit more depending on where you live, for around $150 to $160, do I think that this keyboard is worth it? Honestly speaking, the only benefit that I see with going with a plastic keyboard is really gonna be the aesthetics. Like this one does come in quite a few different colors. Like you can get it in black, beige, uh, smoke, atomic purple, frost, and blue mint. Blue mint is the blue one that we have. And obviously the frost is the white theme that we have. So with that being said, I think that it's okay. Definitely not the worst pricing, but with the Keychron Q3 coming out, that does kind of confuse that conversation a little bit because you have essentially a plastic keyboard and you could spend 30 to 40 ish dollars more and get a metal keyboard kind of just depends on what you really want to do because i'm pretty sure that the qcron q3 is going to be extremely competitive in terms of the features and the sound and you can get a knob if you want to i'm not into the knob i didn't buy that one but you can if you want to where this i mean it's a pretty basic you know plastic keyboard that looks good sounds decent as well and it just happens to be probably a little bit more money than what I would like to spend, especially after spending it twice. I digress. The NK87 is a pretty decent keyboard. I do wish that it was lower in price, but I understand, you know, companies got to make money to keep the lights on and stay in business. But I don't necessarily think that that means that we should all rush out and buy this thing. I do like it. I don't have any major complaints except for the USB placement of this keyboard because the USB is over to the right. I wish that the USB port was on the left side of the keyboard. Just being a gamer, and I, I just think that it looks better when the USB port is on the left side of the keyboard or centered in the middle like it is on most higher end boards. And that's the thing, this keyboard doesn't feel like a higher end keyboard. By the time you're done building your entire board, you're spending about 250 to $300 and you kind of feel like you should get a little bit of a higher end experience without spending all that money. The NK87 Entry Edition, 160-ish dollars when everything's all said and done between shipping and taxes and whatnot, it's okay. Probably not my first choice, but I'm really curious to see what I'm gonna think of the Keychron Q3, because I think that if that keyboard is really good, it might entirely destroy my opinion of this keyboard. So with that being said, I would buy this keyboard if you're after a very, very specific aesthetic that the plastic is gonna help you get. But otherwise, I would probably look towards something else. But if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel as well. I wanna thank you guys for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.